Coming up. Four, three, two. Space is getting exciting again. And they play for their country, but they're not allowed to wear this shirt. Why? Everyone dreams of having your name on the back of an England shirt, doesn't they? Walking out to a crowd. Hello. Hey there. This is FYI, and it's all here for your info. It's been a couple of weeks since Braden was at Downing Street, finding out about our new Prime Minister, Liz Truss. And we wanted to check out the situation. So, you know that because of the pandemic and the Ukraine war, there's been less food ingredients, oil, gas and other supplies, right? Yeah, and because there's less, the prices have been going up. Well, that's the cost of living for you. The Prime Minister promised help for our parents to pay for the bigger gas and electricity bills they'll get. And that's what she's done, by putting a limit on what can be charged. But what surprised people was that the government also said that the richest people would have to pay less tax. A single higher rate of income tax of 40%. Taxes pay for things like hospitals and the police. But if the government collect less tax, they have to borrow money. Even people in the Conservative Party thought that this was a bad idea. So after just a few days, they changed their mind. But what would Labour do if they were in charge? This is Keir Starmer. He's the leader of the opposition. Every year, each political party meets up to discuss the best way to run the country. Kia Starmer was in Liverpool and Liz Truss was in Birmingham. But who had the better ideas? We asked you to have your shout. I stand here today as the first Prime Minister of our country to have gone to a comprehensive school. The only way to stop this is with a Labour government. I think Keir Starmer taught convincingly he knew like what he was talking about. My message for Liz Truss would probably be um, whatever you do can affect everyone or a lot of people. I have three priorities for our economy. Growth, growth and growth. I'm so proud to launch our Green Prosperity Plan. When I'm old enough I would work Keir Starmer also because like he's saying that he will go to net zero at 2030. 100% clean power by 2030. Liz Truss is saying that she'll go to net zero at 2050. But do you think they're actually going to do it by 2030? Well, Liz Truss said, oh, we will more produce more of oil and gas. But she did say that she's going to reduce the tax price. Yeah, but what that, does that do with the environment? I believe that you know best how to spend your own money. She's planning on lowering taxes for the rich. It would probably have devastating impacts because there's less taxes to fund at the NHS. Well, I've heard she has kind of messed up the economy. There's lots of panic. As a father, I'm spurred on by the voices of our children. I think Keir Starmer, he seems like a good speaker in front of people. Some prime ministers are like helping the people. I think so they should focus on more like helping the younger generations. Thanks to everyone at Sawston Village College. If you want to get some friends together and talk about what matters to you, you could start an FYI news club. All the details are on our website. And if you're in a news club, you'll know that not every story you see is true. So you'll like this. Last week, Hurricane Ian devastated parts of America and people even lost their lives. But the coastal water has also swept in some unusual sightings. This massive elephant seal went viral after reports that after Hurricane Ian reached land, it was stranded on a street in Florida. Is it fake news or fact? We'll give you the answer later. The devastating storm, Hurricane Ian, was also responsible for the delay of the launch of Artemis I. The test flight was due to blast off from Kennedy Space Center in Florida, but the rocket had to return to the vehicle assembly building when the storm was forecast. It now means it's been cancelled three times. Artemis is the next step in America's space program to return to the moon. The mission will test how much rocket power is needed to get there. It's such a shame it was cancelled. I know. It was way back in 1969, over 50 years ago, when Neil Armstrong was the first man on the moon with the famous words... It's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. But there hasn't been a woman on the moon yet. The good news is, this week things have got going. 
This is an Artemis. It's the fifth SpaceX mission to take astronauts to the International Space Station. And that did go into space this week. I love watching the launch. Four, three, two, one. Ignition. That's amazing. That's so cool. Before they blasted off, I checked in with NASA to see if they were ready. The only problem was the time difference. Hello, it's Scarlett from FYI on Sky News and Sky Kids. Wait, you spoke to NASA? Of course I did, at the launch readiness review. I found out more about Nicole Mann. This week, she became NASA's first female mission commander. How will mission commander Nicole Mann's time in space help NASA return to the moon? Good question, Scarlett. So the crew members, Nicole specifically, will be doing experiments on some of the life support systems that we need to improve on, that we are going to need to go back to the moon and then eventually to Mars. It's a big moment for Nicole, of course, as it's her first time in space. And get this, the man in charge of the International Space Station also had a tip for me. I'll finish and say, do your homework every day and maybe we'll be talking to you one day from space. Thank you, Joel. And, that's and this was the up. last press briefing from NASA before the launch day. That's so cool. I know. Well, Nicole and the rest of her crew docked safely on Thursday, and Nicole will be doing her research in space for six months. It's been a good time for NASA in distant space, too. You've heard of asteroids, right? Check this out. They're not planets. They're actually bits of rock orbiting in space. And when a really big one comes along, there can be a bit of a bump, to put it mildly. Scientists think that the last one made the dinosaurs extinct. Now, obviously, they didn't have video back then, but it might have looked something like this. I can see why we'd want to avoid that happening. It's very, very, very unlikely to happen. But to protect our planet, NASA still wanted to test the technology to divert an asteroid, if they ever have to. So they built the DART probe and sent it into space to hunt out an asteroid called Diamorphos. This is the most expensive crash in the history of the universe. Three, so it's getting closer. Two, closer. One. Closer. Well, I mean, it must have worked. They look very happy. Telescopes will have to confirm it did its job. Finally, there was a space world record last week. Well, kind of. It was the first weightless football match. This team went on what's called a parabolic flight. You go so high up into the Earth's atmosphere that for a few seconds and free fall, you become absolutely weightless. That's so cool. Oh, check it out. It looks like so much fun. Playing football. Astronauts do it for training. And so this lot got in the record books by being weightless for a few seconds, just like in space. Sick of your dad filming your school concert badly? Is it worse than this? Dad. Andrew and his friends run a TV OB outside broadcasting truck. Take a look. So I'm Andrew and this is E2E outside broadcasting unit. On these four wheels you could expect the same type of equipment you find in a studio. We just rock up. <laughs> We are filming here a Year 7 concert up to Year 9s. Let me introduce you to the crew. Here we have here Isla on camera. And over there we have James on camera. And we have Jack here on camera. Each camera is positioned in a different place, so we have a choice of angles on the concert. They're all connected to OBU, Mission Control. That's where I come in. I'm directing for the first hour, and then Isla's going to direct for the second hour. I will be inside on one of the cameras, trying to do like wide and close-up shots. In a wide shot, you can see everyone. In a close-up, you zoom into the action. So I am the vision mixer and what I do is I change what camera angles go onto the live to make the video or the live stream more interesting. It looks easy, doesn't it? But this is live. The audience is arriving and we only have one chance to capture this action. The pressure is on. Cut to camera one. It is quite a lot of responsibility, but I like having responsibility. Are we on camera one? Yeah. So what I enjoy is that I get to work with all my friends and work together as a team. 
other people, they like football or something, but I like what I'm doing right now. Camera two, you're live. Cut to camera one. And the show's over. We made it. I feel like it went amazing, really. We got some really good shots and they played really well. I think we got brilliant shots and I think it'll look good on the recording. That's a wrap! Check these guys out. Catalonia in Spain has this weird tradition. For over 200 years, people have been forming human towers and competing to build the highest and most complicated tower. Awesome. Just remember, don't do this at home. So Scarlett, Braden says that the Football World Cup starts this week and England are playing in Turkey. Are you sure? I thought it didn't start until November. Well, that's what Braden says. Just when you think you've seen everything football has to offer, today I'm playing with a team like no other. Football isn't just a sport. For some, it's how you identify yourself. It can give you confidence, fitness, and a sense of belonging. This is the Amputee Football Squad. I'm Thomas Atkinson, I'm an 18-year-old, and I'm a goalkeeper playing with amputees. 18 and the captain as well. Oh, yeah. Bash. Oh, I always play the fall off my leg, um, and then as soon as I kick the football again, it's like, that's it. When you lose a leg, no matter what, was the reason about it, you always think that you're not going to be able to, to play it again. I was left footed before I lost my leg, so I had to readapt and learn how to pass, how to shoot. This has all been all my life, so that's all I've ever knew, so this is like my everyday. Though it's called amputee football, to Thomas and his team, it's just football. It's Team England, they know they're the best in the country. Now they're about to find out whether they're the best in the world, and I've come just in time. This is their final training camp before they fly out to Turkey to hopefully have their chance to reach the final in the World Cup. So far they've played against USA, Argentina and Indonesia. But it's quite a new sport. There's one thing that they can't do yet. Playing for your country has always meant having three lions on your shirt. It's a tradition that goes back to the famous year of 1966 when England won the World Cup at Wembley. But the Three Lions logo is a trademark. That means it belongs to the English Football Association. As amputee football takes off in England, their players hope that they might get permission to use it. Everyone dreams of having your name on the back of an England shirt, doesn't they? Walking out to a crowd. Just being able to be under the same bracket as the England team, um, this should be special for us all. From what I've seen, these guys play just as, if not better, than any other team. So if you could win any trophy, what would you win? Ooh, it's got to be the World Cup. Got to be the World Cup. Well, this week is Thomas's big chance. Come on, England, bang them goals in. We spoke to the Football Association and they said... We are looking at potential opportunities which could lead to the integration of the England amputee teams with the FA. And I've got Thomas on the phone live from Turkey. So Thomas, how's it going? Hi, uh, you're speaking to me a couple hours after we've just lost 1-0 to Angola. Aww. Oh, that's devastating. Obviously, we weren't at the level that we needed to be to be um, the world champions. Yeah, well, you've done so well to get this far. I mean, I can't stunt the lads, we did incredible. Well, better luck next time, and hopefully one day you'll be able to play with the three lines on your shirt. Oh, yeah, that's the plan. <laughs> Earlier we told you that after Hurricane Ian, there have been reports of animals swept into the street. But was the one we told you about an elephant seal fake news or fact? It was fake. The seal was certainly lost, but not after Hurricane Ian. Fake news can happen when people share something without checking their facts. The original video has been around for two years. We've even shown it on FYI. And that's not Florida, it's a town in Chile. I got it right. Well, that's it for this week's FYI, but we'll leave you with some cool shots of Nicole Mann and the rest of her crew enjoying their first moments in space together. Bye. And here we come through. First one through the hatch is gonna be Nicole Mann, commander of Dragon. And now the first Native American woman 
to live and stay aboard the International Space Station.